St. Andrews has brought me nearer to Jesus and continues to in new ways every day. We are invited into following Jesus on the way of life. I feel like I'm at home when I'm here, and my relationship with the Lord has just begun. I didn't have one until I came here, and I'm so thankful. I really see the heart of Jesus in this community, and it's just like one beautiful, multi-generational family. That's what the entire Bible is about, You're receiving the goodness of God and His mercy and grace and forgiveness, and that being the catalyst and the power to step on the journey of following Him following Jesus. God put that in us, a natural desire to serve, serve Him, serve others, and that's what we're doing here. Hello everyone, and welcome to St. Andrews. My name is Chase, and thank you for joining us for worship today. This weekend, Pastor Brian continues our sermon series called Global Impact. The season of Lent is coming, and we want to invite you to join us on the journey. Each week of Lent, we'll have a video and study guide that dives deeper into our sermon series and explores more about what it means to truly see Jesus. This is a great opportunity to join a small group if you aren't already in one. Grab a few friends and form your own group or email us to get plugged into an existing group. If you're interested in meeting in person safely, there will be a group meeting on campus on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. starting on February 17th. Virtual groups will be available for anyone who wants to stay home. For more info, please email Troy DeLuca at troyd at saprez.org or check out saprez.org slash small dash groups for more information. Again, thanks for joining us today. Make sure you say hello in the chat and let's worship together. The chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Let's sing this together Who could imagine So great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me
Your 
Hi, St. Andrews. My name is Julie Wood. I'm the minister of Serve, and what a joy to worship with you today. Would you bow your head in a word of prayer? Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that we have the opportunity to worship you, whether from the comfort of our bed or our sofa or our backyard, whether we're alone or gathered with friends, I thank you that wherever we are, you are. We thank you that you are God in our midst. And as we gather for another weekend of encountering your presence, hearing your word, I pray, Father, that you would illuminate our hearts and our minds and your words from the pages of Colossians to teach us more about who you are, Jesus. And as you reveal yourself to us, may we be found faithful servants to live into that which you're stirring in our hearts, that we might respond to your word, that we might participate with your spirit in a way that brings glory to your name. And so now, Lord, as we continue in our time of worship, we are ready to look for you, and we anticipate the way that you want to speak to each of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Brian Eckelman. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. I want to invite you to a very special meeting on February 14th, 2021 at 1 p.m. online. We will hold our annual congregational meeting. This will be an online meeting to review the 2020 financials from our church session, to vote on elders and deacons in the nominating committee. Also, annual reports will be emailed to you, and a limited amount of hard copies will be available in the church office. By February 10th, you'll be getting those materials. And if you're a member of our church, you're invited to attend and participate in this important meeting. In fact, we need you there. If you are not a member, you're invited to attend and observe the meeting, of course, but members will receive a voting card in the mail to use. As, if you are a member and have not received a voting card by February 5th, and you'd like to ensure that uh, you are a member, perhaps, then call our church office for more information. Details are also available online. And again, if you have uh, any questions, please contact us and please attend this very important online meeting. We'd also like to invite you now to participate in the giving of our tithes and offerings. This is an important time in our worship, really, because it's a time when we remember how much God has truly blessed us. And so with joy and celebration, we invite you to give. And we can do that certainly by sending a check to the church, but also if you'd like to, you can click the button that says give at this time and you can join us in sacrificially offering to God a portion of what he has so generously given to us. Yeah. 
maybe it's just me, but few things match the feeling of embarrassment, like showing up somewhere overdressed. Like that. Or maybe like that. Or maybe you're overdressed um, for the elements. <laughs> like that. And for those winter football fans, underdressed can also be a problem. <laughs> Two years ago, I was asked to officiate a memorial service, and I wore the usual funeral outfit. You know, the dark suit, the shirt, the tie, the whole thing. It seemed a little odd when the widow greeted me outside of the chapel in a flowered Hawaiian... The only name I know is Moo Moo. Um, kind of this long flowered outfit. And then we walked into the chapel. And I just want you to picture this. Every man at the whole place was in flip-flops, board shorts, and some kind of flowered, garish Hawaiian shirt. And the women were dressed appropriately for the same thing. And then the widow told me, oh yeah, Gus loved the beach, didn't you know? And so we decided to have it be a Hawaiian theme. Sorry, we never got around to send you the invite that told you that, but we're glad you're here. So I led the worship service, dressed like a French waiter at a luau, basically. <laughs> There's something about being overdressed or underdressed that can hit us in a very emotional place, isn't, isn't it? Because what we wear doesn't just equip us for what we're doing. Most of all, what we wear expresses who we are. Now, I know Californians are very relaxed in their dress code, but if you've ever visited, well, anywhere else, you know that dress code can be a big deal for a lot of people. We're in the midst of a series of sermons on the book of Colossians called Global Impact. And Paul, in the passage we're going to look at today from chapter 3, says that for each of us who represent Jesus Christ to this world, in offering global impact in his name, for us there is a dress code. Or as he puts it, he says, as God's chosen people, clothe yourselves with this. And so we're going to look today at the well-dressed follower of Jesus Christ, how that person might appear. And by the way, it's not always the way you think that person should appear. But most of all, especially the disciples' dress code is not given to us for the reasons that you and I would usually imagine. So let's dive in. We'll take the passage in sections, and so keep your Bible handy and keep it open. We'll begin with Colossians 3, 1 through 4, which says this. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We'll stop there. What is the dress code for the ambassador of Christ to the world? Well, it begins with what you and I would call faith. I think that's what these first four verses are all about. Now, faith, I know, is a popular word. We use it for a lot of different things. In fact, it's probably used too often, so much so that we don't really know what it means today. And if so, if you're ever really wondering what faith really looks like, I'll give you a definition. Christian faith means finding your identity in Christ. Here's how Paul puts it in the text. He says, faith for you and for me is internal. It's unseen. You see, we we look to Christ and we find our identity with Christ and therefore our faith is hidden with Christ in God. We trust what God has done for us. And isn't it fascinating that when the Apostle Paul talks about faith, he doesn't talk about behavior here. He begins with, set your heart on the things that are above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on the things above where Christ is. It's all about aspiring and admiring Jesus Christ. But it doesn't end there. And faith is never alone. And this is an important thing. Faith is always paired with repentance. Now, as much as faith is a popular word, repentance, guess what, is an unpopular word. 
If faith is used too much, then repentance is often used too little. If you were ever wondering what repentance really is, what it looks like, it looks very similar to faith, just the inverse. Faith, remember, is finding our identity in Christ. Repentance, on the other hand, is giving up our identity in everything that rivals Christ. And you fill in the blank as to what that is in your life or in my life. In other words, repentance looks like this. I would say before I came to know Christ, before I had faith, I was the Lord of my life. Now Christ is the Lord of my life. And so I give up my own lordship. Before I came to faith in Christ, my identity, my life focus was bound up in my achievements, my addiction, my popularity, other people's perceptions. Now I take a back seat with all those things and they are second place or distant second place to my focus on Christ. One more. Before, I used to revel in this behavior or that behavior. I used to think that that was okay. I might even have celebrated it. Now, however, I do otherwise. And so have a look at verse 5, where Paul says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of the Creator." In other words, while faith is internal and unseen, repentance is external and seen. Repentance, if you will, is faith made visible. And Paul wants us to be very clear. And he wants to be very clear to the Colossians. Folks, if someone teaches or preaches to you that your behavior doesn't matter to God, that it doesn't matter whether you sin or don't sin, do not believe it. Don't believe it for a moment. You and I need to look no further than these verses to know that our behavior matters as individuals and as a church. We should be extremely serious about how we act because God cares about how we act and because the world is watching how we act. But most of all, we should care about our behavior because our behavior that does not look what Christ looks like contradicts in the strongest terms who we are in Christ. And so we reveal in that moment that our faith in Christ is weak at best and our witness becomes weak to the world. So faith and repentance, they're the opposing sides of the same divine coin. Faith goes with repentance and repentance goes with faith. You can't have one without the other. But here's what we need to see as well. And it's a crucial point. We have to remember what comes first. We have to remember that faith always comes before repentance. That God always gives grace and gives us love and forgiveness before he asks us and commands us to obey. It's tremendously important. Have a look at verse 12 now. We'll go there. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And here, by the way, is the dress code worthy of global impact for Christ. Paul says to the Colossian church and to us, clothe yourselves, put on these garments of forgiveness and, and all these things, these characters that are what you and I would know as Christian characteristics. Forgive one another. And don't forget, again, thinking about uh, the, the clothing analogy 
Don't forget that love is that one thing that accessorizes the whole outfit, if you will. It draws the entire wardrobe together. But don't forget, for you and for me, what comes first. Take notice. He declares right from the beginning, therefore, because of all Christ has done, because of what Christ has done, and we, that goes all the way back to chapter 2, verses 9 through 13, as Chap preached on last week. He says, Because you are God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, therefore do these things. And you know, baked into our human nature is really the reverse idea of what this should be like. We think for relationships, we think as far back as we could remember, and therefore we kind of transport this to our relationship with God, that we have to first clean up our act and then God might love us. That if we, if we reach out to God, then he will be gracious to reach out to us, but we need to do something first. I want you to realize how impossibly non-existent that is in Scripture. Jesus never came to Peter or James or John or any of the disciples and said, I'm thinking about you following me, but first, would you be willing to give up, you know, tax collecting and, and you know, swearing at fishermen and stuff like that? He never does that. He says, follow me, and then he teaches them how to live. By the way, this is no different in the Old Testament. God Almighty, in the Old Testament, he delivers his people from Egypt. And after the miracles that save them, that rescue them, that bring them deliverance, then God says, and I want to command you. God's love and grace always come first. Please don't forget that. Paul said in this passage, look at verse 12 again. Therefore, because you are God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, humility, gentleness, patience, and over all these virtues put on love. I'm going to take a huge risk of embarrassment. In fact, it's not a risk at all. It will be embarrassing to me. Like most 11-year-old boys, I wanted to be exactly like my big brother. Robert was 16 and he was much smarter than me, so much so that he was a senior in high school at that time. He had skipped two grades when he was very young because he was so amazingly smart. And yet, even as a 16-year-old, Robert had grown to 6'4". He was athletic. He was muscular. He was a scratch golfer. He was a star on the basketball team. You can understand now why I'm the damaged person that I am. Uh, but when I got to seventh grade and the basketball team said yes to my coming on. I think they just had enough jerseys for us. I made sure I got the same number jersey as my brother. And here's the picture. <laughs> okay, I know, I know. I, I didn't save this. My mother somehow saved this. She thought it was cute. <laughs> well, I didn't want to be cute. I wanted to be Robert. And here's the point. As you look at this embarrassing picture of this gawky, less than teenage boy with no killer instinct for basketball, trust me, it was proven later on. Here's what I want to let you know. You and I will spend our best energy. We are called to spend our best energy to set our hearts and our minds on things that are above where Christ is, to try to find our identity in Christ, to try to look exactly like our Savior Jesus. And as we emb embrace faith and repentance and find our identity in Him and give up seeking our identity in anything that else, you and I need to know we will never look like Christ and often our efforts to look like Him will be as laughable well, as that 11-year-old bag of bones trying to look like his brother, the star on the high school basketball team. But as you do, here's one more thing I want you to remember. The reason why you and I are so wonderfully invited to clothe ourselves in all these virtues 
and faith and repentance is because Jesus himself, he took on a dress code too. The story of Christ coming to earth is that God himself dressed himself in the garments of humanity. He dressed down so he could stand alongside you and me in all our struggles, our frustrations, our suffering. He came and he first loved us. He underdressed to be like us. And by his grace and faith, therefore, we have the opportunity in faith and repentance to have global impact in his name. God bless you this week. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior now to wash our feet. Now at His feet we bow. Oh, 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 oh. the one who wore our sin and shame, now robed with majesty. shines for all to see your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King. The fear that held us now gives way to Him who is our peace. His final of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of the
It is our greatest hope that during this worship service, God's love has come near to you and his power has been more real to you than ever. And so if you'd like to let us know about what's going on in your life, if you'd like someone to pray for you or pray with you or to pray for someone that you know, we'd love to connect with you. Please let us know. Contact the church. Email us. Uh, hit the button there that, that makes comments at this time. But we'd love to connect with you even in these disconnected days. And now if you'd bow your head, I'd like to offer a benediction for each one of us for the week ahead. And so may grace and mercy and peace from God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and be with us always as we clothe ourselves in those things that he wants for us. And as we become more and more like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you.